uh, already domestic uh, theater reforms for microscopy. The state uh, makes a uh, new that the fact that all theoretics are preferred in materials, so they will distort mechanically uh, when a uh, bias will be applied to them. It's a scanning drop type of thing, I think, to me, which just uses the uh, metallic transmitters, the things that are coated with the metal, so that one during scanning can apply a uh, bias uh, between the top electrode consisting of the, the, the chip and the bottom electrode put between the substrate and the ferroelectric uh, unit. Now coming to the functionalities of the uh, domains in distant horizon. There have been recently quite uh, interesting reports about uh, uh, what can happen at the domain walls in distant horizon. And there are also contradictory reports. Uh, one first report comes from Berkeley, it's a major field paper, where uh, in distant horizon, at suction films grown on strontium ferrite coated uh, strontium titanium substrates of different orientations. Uh, what it was uh, seen was that the domain walls can be conductive or non-conductive. The ones that are conductive they are the uh, 109 between the and 118 domain walls, but not the 71. So in none of their samples, no matter what kind of orientation we use for the substrate, for the 71 degree domain walls, uh, no conduction was observed. So this was a joint study by cytosol microscopy and conductive ISM. Here the inscribed boundary boundaries for the 109 and uh, 180 degree The second report comes from Arnhem and the group of Beth Mahara, where actually it turns out that also the 71 degree domain walls can be conducted. So this is a distance horizon, one third year oriented, grown on strontium titanate, which has a mixed domain patterns of 109 and 71 the uh, domain walls. And when they did conductive ice time, where thinning across the 71 degree domain wall, the higher current was measured for the 71. So there is contradiction between the reports from different groups, although the same material is being investigated. Therefore, we uh, try to get into this direction and just do our own experiments and see what we can say about these kind of domains as distant right is actually one of the major domains in most investigations nowadays about ferrite and um, ferrite materials. To grow our films on the first and Sunday, they are orthorhombic substrates, which uh, if we cut them in the one one zero direction, one can describe them by pillow tubes with an A and B uh, lattice parameter that match nicely the lattice parameter of this new ferrite. So you can expect good and special growth without uh, uh, too many and uh, what we achieve on, on this uh, highly insulating substrate is the stabilization of two uh, ferroelastic uh, variants of the 71 uh, this, uh, domain. The, they would be oriented uh, uh, along the 001 orthorhombic uh, direction of the substrate, and they form a striped pattern. And on top of this uh, distance horizon films, we put uh, infrared electrodes with a 20 micron gas so that then we can uh, apply an electric field and fix the correlation in place. <coughs> this is, for instance, the analysis of a 50 nanometer thick distance horizon grown on the first instant The topography of the substrate and of the ground field on top of the substrate, and we do filter uh, response work microscopy in the out of plane direction and also in plane to monitor the uh, uh, direction of the correlation in the domain. So the vertical PSM will give us information about the direction of the correlation of the plane, and it is could be established that it's out um, pointing towards the top surface. So, uh, and combined with a lateral response, we can then assign which particular type of uh, ferroelastic variant form. And there are 71 uh, domain oriented uh, this way. This would look uh, in the recording process. We then uh, applied uh, electric field, uh, 200 volts on our sample. This is just one pass for five seconds to prove that with this kind of electric field, we are able to pitch the uh, uh, domains in plane. So this would be the two electrodes. The electric field is uh, 
oriented part perpendicular to the sky going. And we saw indeed a change of contrast from bright to black, indicating an inflated switching of the domain. What happens to the uh, component inflex is a simple of a nine degree rotation. So that the overall net polarization in plane will switch with 180 degrees. Just to test that indeed our Pearson results are right that we do switch the polarization of time this uh, uh, is. We did also microscopic measurements with real geoparatic telescopes. So we can um, uh, measure the hysterical and we saw that with 200 volts we are indeed able to switch the polarization to get a nice hysterical group and switching RM6 as the first voltages at which the polarization field should uh, switch over to polarization. Why do we pay so much attention to this kind of fried domain? The reason is that they may be useful for devices. So this is our driving force. We implement paralytic materials in, in particular different polarizing devices. There's a nice report on um, in future review letters coming again from Berkeley, where uh, a header is a junction, a header of such as cobalt iron with a different polarizing was used to switch the magnetization of the cobalt iron by applying an electric field in the distant ferrite uh, underneath. So the distant ferrite has to have this 71 domain wall, this type geometry, so that by applying an in-plane electric field, we switch the net polarization from one direction to the opposite one, 180 degrees. Thereby, the top magnet, the magnetization in the top layer is also switched by 180 degrees. This makes use of the fact that the distance ferrite is also anti-ferromagnetic, and we have this scanty magnetic moment on the iron ion, which when we switch the polarization, they will also rotate accordingly. And this coupling between the scanty magnetic moment of iron to the magnetic moment of the cobalt iron on top leads to the um, monitoring of or manipulation of the magnetization in the top magnetic layer. So the question now arises, how, how, how much can we switch, or is it a stable device? Can we operate on it uh, repeatedly without any kind of fatigue uh, reaction? And this is why we are interested in this side. We wanted to see what happens to these domains when we switch them repeatedly for um, millions of times. And this is, a, for, for a parallel material, this is one of the routine tests. We have to prove that there is no fatigue. And we drew again a bit bigger field, 100 nanometer thick distance around the system of the electric force. So we wanted to have a better stability that the field won't break down during the repeat uh, fatigue experiment. And they, in this case, we formed mainly 71 degree domains. Uh, again, the polarization pointing upward, but there is a minority of domains pointing downward, and these are 190 uh, domains. But what we saw is that after many uh, switching cycles that can be occurred, there is basically no change in the domain part of the pattern. So we did it almost up to uh, one, one uh, million time, and there, there was no change. So this indicates that these dom uh, domains are uh, stable against the switching repeatedly, which indicates that they may 